Hi there, welcome to chandu.org on YouTube. Excel conditional formatting is a very useful feature. In this video, I am going to share with you five useful and effective conditional formatting tricks. These are not your run of the mill tricks, so I am pretty sure you will find at least one, if not all the five, completely new to you. Thank you so much. Let's continue the video. The five tricks that we will cover are icons but not too many highlighting an entire row that meeting the that meets the condition zebra shading relative dates and then data bars and icon in the same cell let's say you got uh, some sort of information like this where you're looking at um, 100 items these could be products employees projects whatever may be the case and uh, you have uh, done some comparison and then based on the change in the value from last year to this year you have put a conditional formatting icon this is very easy to insert you already know this much because all you have to do is uh, select the percentages apply conditional formatting icons and that will add but what happens with 100 items or significantly large number of data points is these icons will become a bit of cognitive overload so your audience will look at all these icons and they get a little uh, frustrated so how do I fix this problem let's say we want to show an icon wherever the percentage change is above a value that you define this could be a threshold value so for example let's say if it is above 50 percent or below negative 50 percent then I want to show the value so we can define these in two cells alternatively you can just hard code them then select the rule that you have already applied go to manage rule and double click or select it and edit the rule now here where we are saying green icon when the value is greater than zero instead of zero you just say that is um, H5 likewise red icon when the value is less than that one right h6 so we set up the rule like that now what this will do is it will give you a green icon and a red icon when you click ok and apply you will get that but you will also get these yellow bars and that's not something that we prefer we want to reduce the overload not replace one icon with another so the next step is while you are there you can just set the middle one to no cell icon and that's it now what happens is you will see far fewer icons everything else is basically products that have not had significant change from last year but uh, anything in those threshold levels will be highlighted and you can adjust them because they are linked to the cell so for example i can set this to 10 percent or i can set this to 100 percent to see which uh, products have done exceedingly well so that's the trick number one the second trick is highlighting an entire row let's say I want to highlight any products that have had 2000 or more value in the Jan 2001 column so I can select that I can apply highlight cell rule greater than and then type the number 2000 and then it will highlight but this rule is only looking at this one Whereas maybe you want to look at this but highlight that entire row. This might seem a bit tricky especially if you are getting started with conditional formatting but it is a very very easy rule to implement. All you have to do is uh, we'll first uh, clear the rules from this sheet and then because we want to highlight that entire row we need to select the entire table because the rule needs to apply to the entire table. And then we'll go and select a new conditional formatting rule from here the rule that you want to use is a formula to determine which cells to highlight that's the rule that we should be applying and this formula is we want to check Jan 21 column which is column D so we will say is equal to and then D5 now when you do it like this it will say dollar D dollar 5 uh, and if you say greater than 2000 then what you're essentially doing is you're always checking d5 value now what we want is we want to check the values in column d but change the row number from 5 to 6 7 like that based on whichever row we want to highlight 
so remove one of those dollars make it like a dollar d5 that means it's locked to column d but row number remains relative so that is the condition and then the formatting that we want to apply is let's just say we want to fill up with that color instantly all the cells that have value of more than 2000 in the month of jan 2001 will be highlighted across the entire row so that's the second trick the third one is zebra shading now when you got a big table like this it will be a bit tedious to read you can apply for example table formatting to this data and then automatically every other row will be highlighted but let's just say you can't do this because it is for an output place or uh, a result of some calculation or something and you cannot use tables so in such case what you can use do is you can use conditional formatting to apply zebra shading <coughs> to do this all you have to do is just select your data uh, and then go to home conditional formatting new rule and again click on the use formula to determine which cells to format and from here all you have to do is because we want to highlight every other row we just want to check what is the row number and if it is an even row number we want to highlight so we will say um, the is even function and then row number what row does is it will give you the row number uh, and then is even will 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 do it like this and you will have a beautiful zebra shading applied to your data now if you are not a big fan of highlighting every other row maybe you want to highlight five rows in one color and five rows in another color you can also change the formula accordingly so for that you may have to get a little more complicated in terms of formula writing let's just say i want to highlight five at a time as a band so we can think of the logic outside the spreadsheet and then implement that in conditional formatting window because that will give you a bit more flexibility so a row on this will give me the row number as you could see that that's the row number five and if you fill down that will give you that now what we want to do is first five rows i want to not highlight and then the next five rows i want to highlight so instead of simply saying row i'm going to say row of and select b4 as a hard reference so dollar b dollar four so that will give me one there and then you fill this down it will give you one two three four five so essentially we want to uh, then highlight the values where it is up to 5 not, not highlighting and then 6 to 10 we want to highlight 11 to 15 not highlight so once this thing is there we just want to turn this into a true or false kind of a thing so one way to do this is I can take this I can then um, divide the this whole number with 5 and get the integer portion of that um, <clears throat> so we will do it like uh, quotient of that and then 5 this will be 0 here and then it will be zeros all the way for the first four values for the fifth value it becomes 1 and then here it becomes 2 so we now notice that because of the way the division works the first four values are 0 so what you could do is you can kind of add a, a, a minus one there and then that will fix the problem so five zeros five ones five twos five threes like that now on top if i apply is odd i'll get a false and true kind of a condition so this is the formula that we want to apply i can copy this formula now and i can select my data go to conditional formatting manage rules edit this rule where it says is even i can just say is odd of quotient row row my row of b4 etc etc and then apply and that will give you a nice zebra shading with five rows wide you can use this for seven rows especially if you're displaying by dates to highlight every other week etc so that's the third tip the fourth one is relative dates 
imagine you are looking at some sort of activities with the due date and percentage done information and uh, they go all over the place some of them are in april some of them in march some of them as soon as next week and some of them are in the past and you want to maybe highlight all the due dates that are occurring in the next one week or next seven days you can select the dates go to conditional formatting highlight cells and a date occurring and from here i can say um, next week and it will tell me which activities are coming up in the next week there are not that many options here but at least uh, this is something that not many of us realize that from here you can actually use a relative date feature so what this really means is it is dynamic so if i open this file tomorrow today is 10th of february so if i open it tomorrow or one month down the line that highlighting will automatically change to show me what's coming up ahead from that point in time so that is relative date but the limitation of this approach is it only highlights that column if i want to highlight that entire row we must uh, use the new rule feature and write a formula based rule with the date condition so let me just quickly demonstrate how that can also be done we'll paste this uh, in adjust the columns we make this one a little wider and uh, let me just select all of this clear the rules from selection first and then here i'm going to add a new rule on the formula the formula is we want to check if the due date here is uh, in the next seven days so is it is it uh, um, after today but less than seven days from now okay so all we have to do is write that condition we will say is equal to dollar h dollar five but we will make that as dollar h five so you can use the f4 key and press it a few times to turn the reference into the format that you want and uh, and then we will say is it after today as a function and then we want to check for both conditions right so we will use the end formula and then we will say dollar h5 is it less than today plus seven so this is gonna this is going to highlight we want to put it as equal to so it will be anything after today but up until next week and then you can apply the formatting that you want and this is going to highlight all the items now you might be thinking hey this is highlighted here how come that's not highlighted there this is because the definition of next week is really not uh, next seven days but it is the next week for from i believe monday or sunday like that so uh, it will disregard everything this week and it'll go where whereas here the rule that we have applied is next seven days so that's the difference so i hope you found that fourth tip useful the last one that i have for you is data bars and icons so you have the percentage done in the activity and every time an activity is 100 percent done we want to also show a tick mark next to it how do we do this well you may not realize but you can apply both the data bars and uh, and can and cell formatting icons icon sets on on that all we have to do is in the cell here i have my percentage in the sub next cell i've said equal to and then got that value so the first thing that i've done is i have applied um, the data bar so there are two rules the data bar is applied but this data bar i just said show the bar only and then i've said it should go from zero and not stop at one go all the way up to two so what this will do is it will make sure that when it is 100 percent done which is equal to one it will go only halfway to the cell there is there will be still some space left for our icon to show so once this is done i have applied an icon rule as well uh, and then i said green tick mark when the value is greater than or equal to one which would be 100 percent and no cell icon for the other two conditions and again i said only show icon so no value just the icon is displayed so once these two are done we have the icon normally the icon would be on the left you can when the cell is having only icon you can align it to the right hand side as well and this is how both bar and the tick mark will be displayed in the same thing 
Another handy trick here, which is to think of this as a bonus one. If you select the range and adjust the font size, the icons will also adjust. So it's eight points, you can see that's small. If I make it 16 points, my icon also automatically grows. It's not perfectly scaled, but uh, uh, at certain font sizes, it's going to look all right. So go back to eight and that will make it look like that. So those are the five conditional formatting tricks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to grab a copy of this file from the video description and uh, give it a go with these tricks and do tell me in the comment section which one you found most useful or maybe something else that you learned about conditional formatting so that all of us can learn from each other thank you so much for watching this video talk to you again in another one Bye bye